Hey, welcome to uh, Chapter 7 of Textbook MMT. Uh, this is, I believe, Wednesday. I can't remember what day it is actually right now, but anyway. Uh, chapter 7, Methods, Tools, and Techniques. Uh, and I also like to thank my newest subscribers for subscribing, sharing, comment, well, commenting more on the other platforms and not necessarily on YouTube, but anyway. Um, and thank you for uh, for giving me the likes and all that other stuff. Anyway, getting to the task at hand. Uh, let's see, overview uh, 7.1 of the macroeconomics. We often re deploy symbols to re represent, oh, I'm sorry, in, not, not for, sorry. Uh, symbols to represent real world variables of interest, such as real GDP, consumption, and investment. In this case, while the uh, symbols can have an abstract meaning, for example, why is real GDP? They will also usually have a quantitative analog. For uh, example, for the September quarter of 2013, real GDP in Australia was estimated to be minus sign A, capital A, 387031 million. In chapter one, the concept of a model was introduced. A model is a generalization about the way a system functions or behaves. It could easily be a narrative uh, statement, such as, in quotes, uh, a household will consume a proportion of their income after tax, end quote, or, end quote. That theoretical, theoretical statement might then be examined for its empirical re relevance, but will also stimulate further theoretical work trying to provide an expl explanation of their conjectured, uh, conjec conjectured behavior. A macroeconomic model expresses our theoretical conjecture, conjectures about the relationships between the main macroeconomic variables, such as employment, output, and inflation. In, uh, in economics, like other dis disciplines that use models, the narrative statement might be simplified with some uh, mathematical statements involving symbols. In this context, the models will be re will be represented by a number of equations, which can vary from one equation to hundreds or even thousands of equations that describe relationships between the variables of interest. Thus, mathematics is a form of shorthand in terms of concisely representing relationships between variables. We can then apply the basic rules of algebra to conduct our analysis. We typically use letters such as Y to denote different macroeconomics um, and macroeconomic uh, variables. A variable can take in, take in a different values in different time periods. The correspondence between the shorthand symbol and the Variable is not always intuitive, but we maintain consistent conventions throughout the textbook. Greek symbol symbols such as small a are often used to denote the parameters of the model that contribute to the form formation formal formalization of the relationships between variables. In the first instant, uh, instance, these par uh, parameters are usually assumed to be constant over time. So Y is often used to denote a real GDP or national income, but it can al also be used to denote total output. C is a usually used to denote uh, final, household and, uh, final household consumption, and I, total prevent uh, private investments. X is typically used to denote exports and M imports, uh, although it is some macroeconomic uh, in some macro and microeconomic textbooks, M is used to denote the stock of money. We use M only to denote imports. 
There are several types of variables used, to ma used in macroeconomic models and the following classification is useful. Uh, endogenous, endogenous suggests, uh, or dependent variable, its value, to is, its value is determined by the solution to the model and thus dependent on the value of other variables. Exogenous or auto autonomous variable. Its value is given in advance of solving the model. As noted, variables are related by the way of equations which express the structure of the macroeconomic model. Usually a variable that we seek to explain is written on the left-hand side of the equation sign, which is equal, and is then influential in explaining the value and movement of the left-hand side variable of interest. The relationship between the variables on the right and left-hand sides of the equation is described in terms of some coefficients or parameters. For example, y equals 2 times uh, 2x, which uh, is an equation which says that variable y is equal to 2 times a, a variable x. The equals sign uh, tells us that the si left side of the equations uh, equals sorry uh, equals sign is one of the same magnitude as the right side. That is an equal an equation has equal left and right sides. That uh, you solve an equation by substituting values for the unknown unknowns. The number two is the equation is calling a coefficient and is an estimate of the way in which y is related to x. So if x equals one, then we can solve the for we solve the for the value of y equals two as a result of this equation. A coefficient can also be called a parameter, which is a which is a given in the model and might be estimated using economic. Uh, economic matrix uh, uh, anal analyzes, analyzes analysis excuse me regression or assume by institution uh, intuition excuse me so that the coefficients value is strictly unknown for example you might have written the above equation as y equals bx where b uh, hold on where b is the unknown co coefficient you will note that we uh, that we would be unable to solve for the value of y is in this instance even if we knew this value of x in the case above we are said we we were uh, above where we said x equals 1 then all we could say is that y equals b we would thus need to know what B was before we could fully solve for Y. There are several types of equations that are used in macroeconomic models. Identity equation is an express expression that is true by definition and is equally based on an accounting statement. As, we, as was noted in chapter six, for example, we see that GDP is equal to the sum of the expenditure components, which is true as a result of the way we set up the national accounts and define the expenditure components. Behavioral equation captures uh, it captures the hypothesis we form about about how a particular variation or variable is determined. These equations thus represent our conjectures or a theory about how the economy works and obviously different theories will have different behavioral equation in their system or equations. That is, a, that is the economic model. Equilibrium equation is an expression that captures a relationship between variables that defines a state of rest. Page 106, while the example of y uh, equals two times was easy to solve once we knew the value of x, sometimes it is useful to have models which, which we cannot solve for numerical values of the unknown variables of interest. 
However, we may need we may be able to simplify the equations to show the structure of the model in the terms of what is important to advance our understanding of the relationship between uh, our aggregates. Is seven point two, chapter one, uh, not chapter one, excuse me, uh, uh, page one hundred six, basic rules of, ag of algebra. Never been my strong suit, but I'll give it a try. In a system of equations, the, the values of some variables are unknown and are only revealed when we solve the models model for unknowns. So if we if so if we have these two equations which comprise of system uh, of a comprise of system of equations, seven point one and seven point two. Seven point one has y equals two times, whereas in seven point two has times equals four. I'm guessing uh, 2 would be 2 times. So, yeah. Anyway, then x is a predetermined variable with the value of 4 and is thus uh, exo ex exogenous. Anyway, you do not uh, know the value of y in advance, and you have to solve the equations uh, to reveal its value. So it is indigen indigenous. Indogen, I guess. Anyway, to solve this system, we substitute the value of x in the equation 7.2 into equation 7.1. So we so we get y equals two times four. Uh, y equals eight. Oh, okay. Okay. Two times four. I see that. Yeah. Anyway, more generally, the solution of a system structural exp uh, equations. And entails expressing such of the in, uh, indi indigenous variables, say y, uh, y1, y2, and yn, as functions of the indi uh, exogenous variables x1, x2, and xm. Radio, no, uh, xm. Uh, so that there are an n plus m solution. Box uh, seven point one rules of algebra: addition and subtraction. In general, what we add to our sub uh, to our sub subtract the real from one side of the equation, we have to add to or subtract from the other side to maintain the the uh, equality. Given uh, an equ equation y equals x, then we know that the equation expresses expression is y plus z equals x plus z. So, for we cannot. So, for example, x equals uh, y equals x is equivalent to, to um, y plus two equals x plus two. We also uh, substitute an expression from the from one equation into another and maintain the equivalence. For example, we might have y equals two x and or two times and uh, and t times x or times equals b z. Oh, I'm sorry, six z. Uh, in this case, it is uh, it is equivalent to uh, writing uh, y equals two uh, uh, six z equals twelve z. Multiplication and division. Okay. Anyway. Given an equation uh, y equals x, then we know that the equi equivalent expression is three year three y equals three x or three slash or y three slash three equals x slash three. If we have multiply or divide the left hand side of the equation by a variable for or more complex algebra algebra algebraic uh, expression, then we have to multiply or divide the right-hand side of the equation by the same variable for or expression. Dividing by zero is not allowed, however, and uh, however, and multiplying by zero is not uh, very helpful. Thank you, every page. Anyway, um, let's see. Solution uh, equations. There we go. Okay, that was the actual conclusion of the last part uh, of the uh, the last uh, equation. That was that was a basic rules of algebra. Anyway, uh, so in the above example, uh, two solutions uh, equations are formed from one 
uh, indigenous variable variable y in the equation two point uh, two point seven point one excuse me and one in exogenous uh genuous exogen anyway um variables x uh, in equation seven point two then the known va values of the m uh, ex ex exogenous uh variables can be substituted into each of the n uh, equations which Yield solution to the wait a minute. yeah okay, which uh solution uh yield solutions for the uh endogenous uh, variables say y why 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 uh y one uh y z or oh, no y two and y m to say m yeah n sorry <laughs> life's not very good here anyway. There are uh, constraints on the uh, yeah constraints on the uh, initial uh, system of structure uh, equations for there for the for there to be a unique solution for the unknown uh, exogenous uh, xs xs and indigenous ys. These include the conditions and the condition that the number of equation number of equations number of unknowns in this case uh, n plus m <clears throat> in modeling and uh, ec economic system and often becomes very complicated to ascertain which variables can be uh, considered uh, endogenous and which are truly exogenous at the extreme everything might be considered endogenous, uh, and then things get mathematically complex. So it become tongue complex on this one. Uh, there is a body of uh, eco ecometric there theory which explores the problem of identifying uh, values of coefficients in empirical work, but this topic falls well below, uh, well beyond the scope and aims at this textbook. 7.3, a simple macro macroeconomic model. <clears throat> an example of an identity is the famous uh, national income uh, identity depicting aggregate demand and output, which we consider in Chapter 4, or considered in Chapter 4. It's 7.3, uh, y equals c plus i plus g uh, plus x uh, minus m. Recall that Y is uh, D, uh, GDP, total income and output. C is household consumption and expenditure. I is private capital uh, information. No, sorry, uh, information or investment expenditures. G is total government expenditure. X is total exports and import. Uh, M is uh, total imports. We have used the, the, uh, the identity sign instead of the equal sign uh, to uh, to Distinguished equation 7.3 from the behavioral equation, which is always expressed using an equal sign. This identity is also an equilibrium condition in the simple national income model, but it provides no information about how the right-hand side variables behave, that is, when what factors influence them. To advance that understanding, we form theories about the determinants of these vari variables, which are expressed in behavioral equations. An example of behavioral equations is a simple consumption function. It's 7.4. C equals C uh, 0 plus C couple of Y D. The C was, uh, I think zero anyway, uh, which says the final household consumption C is equal to a constant C plus a proportion C, uh, final dis uh, disposable income Y A or what no Y Y D. The con constant component C is the consumption that occurs if there is no income and it can be considered to be dis uh, dis, dis saving. Note that descript descript descripts. Note that descripts are often used uh, to add form information to a variable. So we append the subscript D to our income symbol Y to qualify it and denote disposable income, total income after taxes. 
We also use subscripts to denote uh, time periods when we are considering a variable over time. So y, uh, in, uh, y, here's yt, uh, indicates we are we are considering the value of y at time period uh, small t. Uh, similarly, y one equals one no uh, t equals i I think refers to the value of and of y at the at time period t minus one uh, i uh, small t, where the lag the minus one depends on the per, per, periodicity. What is it? period density or density of the data. If we were using a quarterly data, then T equals I would be previous quarter and so on. The macroeconomics sum, and excuse me, macroeconomics sum behavioral co coefficients are, coefficients are considered important and we are given a special attention, are given, uh, and are given special attention. So this coefficient C in the consumption function is all is called the marginal propensity to consume MPC, uh, marginal propensity to consume, and denotes the extra consumption per dollar of extra disposable income. So if C equals 0 0.8, we know that for every extra dollar of the disposable income that the economic per, uh, economy produces 80 cents will be spent on consumption. The MPC is intrinsically related to the marginal propensity to save, which is the amount of every extra dollar of disposable income that is saved after households decide on their consumption. So, M so MPS equals one minus MPC by the de definition. The importance of MPC is that it is one of the key determinants of the expansion multiplier, uh, which is uh, sec in section 7.5, which I haven't gone to yet. We will also we will consider this in chapter 15 when we discuss the expansion multiplier. We have already introduced the distinction between ex ex exogen exogenous variables and ex uh, endo genus variables, which are de 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 determined by solving the system of equation. And with that, I will take a small break. Be right back. Hey, welcome back. Uh, we are on page 108, and I believe chapter 7. Uh, an exogenous variable is known uh, in advance of solving the system of equations. We take its value as given or predetermined. We might say by way of simplification that the government spending RG in equation 7.3 is equal to 100 billion, which means the that its uh, value is known and not determined within the model. The identity um, and behavioral equation form a macroeconomic system. This is, of course, a very simple system for the sake of uh, expo exposition. Yeah, exposition. We might assume that the economic, sorry, economy is closed, which means there are no imp exports or imports. In the case the national income identity becomes y equals c plus 1 plus g, not 1, excuse me, i. We also assume that there is no taxation in the model so that disposable income is equal to total economy or income, y. The model is now 7.5 y equals c plus i plus g. And 7.6 is c equals c I want to say zero, uh, plus C equals capital Y. For simplicity, we will assume that I, uh, I and G are exogenous because their values are known in advance. The remaining two variable Y and C are indigenous, uh, in, yeah, in, indigenous uh, so their values are dependent on the solution to the model. How do we solve it for? Uh, how do we solve for y? We substitute seven point six for c 
and 7.5 such that 7.7 year, uh, no, yeah, um, I guess year, uh, equals consumption uh, plus consumption in year plus investment plus government. We can now rearrange this noting we have terms and year on both sides by subtracting consumer and year from both sides as per our algebraic uh, rules. This gives 7.8 uh, year uh, minus consumption year equals uh, consumption plus investment plus government or government spending. We will note that there are only pre predetermined variables known knowns on the right hand side now because y is that is what we call a common factor on the left hand side. We we can write y minus consumption year as y uh, one uh, investment uh, minus consumption seven point nine y uh, investment uh, minus consumption equals uh, consumption plus investment plus uh, government spending. More n note that there is not uh, this has not affected the terms on the right hand side. We uh, we now divide both sides by uh, investment minus consumption, which maintains the equation between the two sides of the equation. This isolates or solves for a year on the left hand side, thus. 7 point and 7.10 year equals consumption plus investment plus government spending uh, slash investment uh, minus consumption. So in word so in words the equilibrium values uh, value of y is a fa is a fact function excuse me of the uh, autonomous variables in model C plus one plus uh, one, I don't know why sometimes I assume one, I plus G. Recall equation 7.10, the redu reduced form of solution of the model in which there are only exogenous or predetermined variables on the right side and on and and unknown variables or variable on the right on the left hand side of the equation. In macroeconomic model, in a macroeconomic model, all the endogenous uh, variables can be expressed in reduced form. So in our example, our solution for consumption would be 7.11 uh, would be uh, consumption equals consumption plus consumption a uh, year, uh, Similar year uh, minus or no equals consumption plus uh, small end, consumption slash consumption plus investment uh, plus uh, government spending uh, and uh, investment minus consumption equals consumption plus consumption pl uh, uh, in, uh, investment plus government slash one. Uh, investment uh, minus consumption. A lot of consuming, in other words. <laughs> Make sure you can derive the steps that we would uh, take to obtain this, this solution. Uh, the reduced form of the system allows us to conduct sensitive analysis, which involves changing the values of exogenous, exogenous variables or the coefficients in this case the MPC and, and analyze uh, analyzing the impact on the endogenous variables C and Y in the model. As an example, what we what would be the impact of expansion in government spending uh, on or expanding G on national income, Y Note that we assume the other and exogenous uh, variables are unchanged. Let's see. Now we're on page 109. Uh, this is again chapter 7, Methods, Tools, and Techniques. Uh, the equation 7.10. We know the, that when G equals G0, I guess a small zero, uh, seven point ten a uh, y uh, y zero equals c zero plus uh, investment plus government spending zero slash one. Uh, I keep saying one sometimes. Uh, investment 
equals consumption equals uh, consumption plus investment and in, uh, investment uh, minus consumption plus government spending uh, slash investment minus consumption. Note that we have separate we have separated G from I and C. If G rises to G, then G because of G. No, um, seven ten B uh, year one equals uh, consumption or zero consumption plus investment. Investment equals consumption or minus consumption plus uh, government uh, government spending first year uh, slash uh, investment minus consumption. So a change in year of a uh, year to year uh, one uh, minus year uh, first year is the difference between seven point ten five ten a and seven point ten b. 7.10c, why that first year minus the, the zero year, or anyway, <laughs> equals uh, government uh, minus government slash investment minus consumption. To simplify our notation, we will usually denote the change in a variable and using the Greek symbol, it's like a like a pyramid, like a rectangle. Uh, so equation 710C would be written as 7.10D. Uh, pyramid symbol Y equals pyramid symbol G slash investment minus consumption. I have not, I have, I haven't really seen what the, what, what the, what that in, uh, symbol um, means, but anyway. But the time spent in devoted by the pyramid scheme looking symbol is revealed by the context. By dividing both sides of the equation by uh, that symbol G, we can express equation 7.10 as 7.10E, uh, Y, and G minus uh, I and I minus C. The right-hand side of the of equation 7.10e is known as a multiplier because it tells us the magnitude of the exchange in y for, for unit change in g. We will examine multipliers in more detail in chapter 15, where we include taxation and exports and imports in, in an open economy. In 7.4, graphic depiction of macroeconomic models, our model. We will also express our theory in a geograph uh, graphical, not geographic, but graphical terms, which are an alternative to the mathematical representation. One, when when income is zero, household consumption is positive. Household consumption rises proportionally with disposable income, but the proportion is less than one. Two, C, plus, uh, C equals to C0 plus C couple of Y, uh, A and D, where uh, zero is less than C, is less than uh, income, and C0 is a constant fixed value, or constant, which is a fixed value. The less than sign tells us that the, that the C, which is NPC, um, lies between the value of zero and one. That is, it is positive, but less than one. For now, we assume taxes are zero, which means the national income, or Y, okay, so yeah, so that was something the usual day kind of thing. Uh, national uh, national income, or Y, and national disposable income, uh, YD, are equal. And after all this, I'm going to go back and kind of like write, write a lot of the uh, other other things down. Um, anyway, let's go see. Da, da, da. Okay, so for now, yeah, okay, so YD are equal, considering the consumption function of if C0 equals 100 uh, and C uh, equals 0 0.8 and Y equals 400, we can solve the equation C equals C plus CY by intersecting the, inserting, excuse me, the known value of the parameters and the expl expl 
explanatory variable, in this case, income, and into the equation and solving it. Thus, 7.12, C equals C0 plus CY equals 100 plus 0.8% uh, equal uh, times 400 equals 420. I will make a joke about that, but never mind. Uh, figure 7.1 shows the consumption function of equation 7.12. You can see that by tracing a vertical line from where disposable income equals 4%, 400 up to the graph line A, and then a horizontal line to the vertical axis, we derive the value of consumption by where uh, by where that line crosses the ver vertical axis. The, the slope of the line is the marginal propensity to consume, or C, in Chapter 15. We will deal with applications of the slope of a line wherein, when we study the principle of the expenditure multiplier. To advance our understanding of graphical uh, methods, assume the national income rose to 1,000. Figure 7.2 shows the combination of Y and C that we have already determined. Point A represents the combination of Y uh, investment and C investment equals four, 400 and 420. It also shows the second combination denoted uh, B, which is found by the same <sighs> process as point A. Trace a, ver a vertical line from where, wait a minute, oh. Okay, <laughs> I want to make sure it's in the right place. Uh, by the way, uh, page 10 or 110. Uh, yeah, anyway, so process as point A trades the vertical lines from where disposable income equals 1,000 up to the graph line and within a horizontal line to the vertical axis to give the value of a consumption. Point B then represents the combination of Y and C equals 1,000 and 9,000, or 900, I mean, uh, or maybe it's 1,900, who knows. Uh, we can check our graphical uh, solution by calculating or calculation using the equation C equals C0 uh, plus CY equals 100 plus 0 0.8 times 1,000 equals 900. So you look at it like minus, yeah, okay, so minus 100. Um, anyway, we represent the slope. Uh, we re Yeah, we represent a slope of the line that interests, uh, intersects, uh, excuse me, A and B using the following formal, uh, for, uh, uh, formula, I mean, uh, 7.13 C equals C2 uh, minus C1 or CI. Uh, and under under that line is uh, C minus or C equals excuse me Y two minus Y equal uh, investment. The slope of the line is given by the change in C divided by the change in Y. You can see from Figure seven point two that this is also the ratio of the segments uh, BC slash AC are in are in words rise over run. The rule, this rule generalizes to any linear function. Note that for the line which negative slope rise would be would be fall. You can check the slope of our consumption function by noting that BC equals 40, 480 and AC equals 600. So BC slash AC equals 0 0.8 which is the MPC or C, which is a consumption pretty much. We noted earlier that we usually denote the change in the variable using the Greek symbol uh, pyramid, not to say that, uh, in that or um, to pyramid, anyway. In that notation, the slope of the consumption function uh, would be C equals uh, C slash Y, and, and uh, both of us having that uh, same symbol, and that slope would be constant at all points on the linear function. Uh, irrespective of the magnitude of that symbol Y, and then the corresponding value of that symbol C. The graphical approach to determining the slope of the line is confined to linear equations. If the function 
is nonlinear, for example, a curve with the slope formula equal equation 7.13 only provides us with the average slope between two points. The more general approach is required when the relationship of, of interest is uh, nonlinear and the slope is constantly very uh, varying. In this situation, differently differential calculus is used, and the slope of the function at the same at some specific point is uh, defined by the der derivative of the function. The principle of calculating the slope from c equals uh, uh, it's a rectangular. Uh, uh, symbol C rectangular Y is the same as the as described above. However, when de deploying different differential calculus, we are assuming that uh, Y is inf infinitely or infinitesimally okay small. That is a value approaching zero, uh, as is uh, C. Otherwise, in contrast to a linear function, there will be ambiguity in measuring the slope because it was it will depend on the chosen magnitude of the y as well as the value of y in which it is measured typically we will be cons constant concerned with changes that are not um, inf infinite similarly uh, small and so the to tools of calculus will be uh, limited use to us in this book uh, textbook Thus, we will use calculus sparingly, but it is useful to understand the basic concept of derivative. The slope of a function, uh, y equals uh, fx, uh, is y slash x. We can see that y equals x uh, plus x. Uh, x, now what, we, what would happen if uh, x was was close to zero. Take a specific example of a nonlinear function x uh, y equals x uh, two. Is it two? Yeah, two. Basically, two times. If uh, if f x and equals x two, f x plus x equals x and plus uh, x equals oh uh, no sorry uh, x2 or times 2 uh, equals times 2 uh, plus 2 uh, or 2 times uh, yeah variable times variable uh, note that we do not expect students to be able to derive these ex expressions themselves rather we hope you can ap appreciate the concept being outlined now if we uh, substitute this into the slope uh, formula we get the derivative of function uh, y uh, equals fx is the limited value of the y x as x uh, is uh, greater than zero. So from equation 7.14, the derivative of the x equals times 2 is 2x since uh, x is greater than zero and can be ignored. Thus, the derivative of a nonlinear function of x depends on the chosen value of x. The derivative of the function x equals fx is written uh, as uh, dy slash dx or fx, in other words, an x. What is meant to be uh, meant, meant by the derivative of the function? It means that if a if y equals times two and rate of the change of the value of the function, y at any point is two times. Uh, if x equals four, then the rate of the cha of change in y is eight. If x equals five, then the rate of change uh, is y is uh, in y is ten. More generally, if y equals x, uh, it can be shown that dy slash dx equals nx. Thus, if you, it, thus if uh, y x uh, y equals x, excuse me, to uh, dy slash dx equals three x, which can be re evaluated at any value of x. For assumption function, uh, c equals c zero plus c y. Applying the general formula for our derivative would yield d uh, dc slash dy equals dy uh, one, same one, 
uh, I equals uh, minus uh, one equals C Y zero equals C side two, which is constant with what we have already found. Note uh, found and note that Y equals one uh, uh, I. 7.5, power series algebra and the expenditure multiplier. We have introduced the concept of expenditure multiplier, which we considered further in chapter, uh, considered further in chapter, chapter 15. It allows us to calculate the total change in, na in national income following a change in one of the autonomous components of aggregate demand, such as government spending or private investment. Multipliers day, uh, day <laughs> multipliers play a central role in discussions of the economic impact of policy in interventions. The multiplier depend uh, depends on uh, the magnitude of the initial injection of expansion plus the induced expansion that follows. We will in turn induced or induces yeah induces further ex consumption expenditure. Thus, if one dollar was injected into the economy through an additional spending, total income would initially uh, rise by one dollar. If marginal propensity to consume was 0 0.8, then this initial rise is uh, in income would induce a rise in consumption of 0 0.8 times one dollar or 80 cents in period uh, in period I. This initial 80, uh, 80 cents rise and induce spending would further induce a rise of consumption in period of two of 0 0.8 times 0 0.8 or 64 cents and so on. Note that this is a simple mathematical expo uh, exposition of what in the real world would be a complex process of adjustment of the economy that the economy to an increase of government spending. And I'll be right back. Hey, welcome back. Uh, and if you stuck with me so far, thank you so much. Uh, please subscribe, please comment, like, share, um, and to your friends. <laughs> and uh, also go to uh, realprogressives.org for more information, more uh, articles, uh, video, no, more uh, audio. Uh, macro and cheese is on there. Uh, I think the uh, untouchables in regards to economic untouchables are on there. Uh, YouTube has. Um, uh, the Rogue Scholar has uh, also has uh, Real Progress in Action, which uh, houses that and houses uh, the Luke Parker show. Uh, also, uh, Steve Grumbine uh, co-hosts a, a, a show on uh, Status Quo with uh, Jordan Sheridan and also has uh, Are You Ready to Grumble on there as well? Anyway, so getting back to the task at ta 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 hand. Uh, page 112. Uh, don't worry, we're actually almost done with this uh, chapter. Uh, remember, every day, except the weekends, I, I, uh, I read the chapter uh, from the macroeconomic uh, book you see in front of you uh, by William Mitchell, El Rondo Ray, Martin Watts. Anyway, uh, this is the MMT version of the textbook, which as far as I'm concerned is actually the best one uh, and because more current and uh, all more of the basic economic up to today as far as how my the monetary system is right now anyways so again back to uh, back to the lecture at hand as some dog one said the multiplier is thus related to the slope of the uh, function and the ag algebraic notion of ge geometry ge damn geometry uh or power series i told you my reading is not very good and my, my my math sucks either way but my reading is okay either way anyways consider one dollar increase in government spending with c representing the marginal propensity to consume or mpc and n being the number of periods then we would then we could write the multiplier uh, over n periods uh, as k and n, where 7.5 k and n equals one uh, equals investment plus consumption plus consumption uh, uh, two times uh, plus uh, consumption three uh, plus consumption four plus 
then uh, the markings there, uh, plus C. 11 or 12, one of the two. Uh, anyway, so the right-hand express expression is called power series, which uh, which each term being a constant multiple, multiple of the um, previous term. Note that multiplying both sides of 7.15 uh, 7 by C gives a uh, 7.16 uh, CK uh, N equals C plus C2 plus C3 plus C4 plus C5 or CS. No, I think it's CS. No, uh, C5 plus and then plus. Uh, there's a pause there between uh, plus uh, C to 8, C and plus uh, C11 plus 1, I guess. Anyway, uh, if we subtract 7.16 from 7.50, we get 7.17 KN CKN equals uh, KN uh, and income, maybe it's income. No, no, investment uh, minus consumption equals uh, investment minus consumption. Okay. Which gives 7.18 KN equals one, uh, no, no, I keep saying one, I minus C uh, slash one, uh, I'm here. Income minus C. Jeez. Anyway, for a large number of periods, we can consider N. Uh, N, so the value of C uh, tends to tends to 0 0.0 uh, less C, less 1. We denote the summer, the summer, summarize summation there we go by k hence uh, 7.19 k plus e equals one or uh, i uh, slash i equals c uh, equation 7.19 shows that multiplier k is i slash i equals c uh, maybe it's one i'm not sure anyway where c is the marginal propensity to consume when n is a large number it should be interpreted as the overall impact of the multiplying uh, multiplier process, rather than considering the impact over a, a, a over a finite number of periods. The seven point six uh, index numbers. An index number allows the comparison between the values of a variable over time. For example, in chapter four. The construction of a consumer price index or CPI was described. However, if we if two or, or more variables are expressed in index numbers form, then straightforward comparisons of the respective rates of change, growth rates, can be made. The creation of an index uh, number requires a starting point, the base period of our value, which is usually set at 100, each observation is then expressed as a percentage of the base year. Uh, the, for example, consider the data in seven points, uh, table 7.1, which shows full-time, part-time, and total unemployment or employment for Australia from 2002 to 2012. The data also reported were reported in units of thousands. Visual uh, inspections of the data can provide information as to the ev evolution of employment over the, this time period in Australia. But what if we wanted? But if we wanted to know what, whether full-time employment had grown more quickly or more slowly than to the, the part-time employment since 20, 2000, this is where index numbers are useful. To convert this data into index numbers, we first define the base of the, as the year 2000 and set the index value to 100. But when generated or when generate index values of full-time employment for 2001 through 2012, by comparing employment in each of these years with employment in 2000 for which the index value is 100, do so. This, this we divide each value of full time employment by its value to in 2000, which was 6,614.6, then multiply by 100. Index number for full time employment 2001 would thus be 100 times 6,597.6. Uh, 
99.5 slash 6614.6 uh, equals 99.7 and so on. Rule 7.2 shows the index numbers corresponding uh, corresponding to the three employment times uh, time series. Note that while common base year for the three series, that is values 2000 are, are set at 100, means that comparisons between them can be readily made even though their corresponding absolute values differ quite significantly. Okay, let's see. We can see that the index number, uh, number for full employment rose from 100 to 2,000 in, in uh, 122.4 uh, to 122.4 in 2012, a 22.4% increase. In the same period, the part-time employment index number rose from 100 to 2,000 to 14 for, for, for 143.9 in 2012, uh, a 43.9% rise, which is almost twice the, as large as the increase in full-time employment. Note that for any pair of index number observations, we can also compute percentage changes. For example, what was the growth of full-time employment in 2008 and 2009? We know that full employment, uh, full-time employment was 7,782.5 in 2008 and had fallen to 7 point, uh, well, 7, uh, yeah, 7.724.3 in 2009. We could uh, calculate a simple percentage 100 times uh, 7,724.3 minus 7,782.5 uh, slash 7,724.3 equals minus 0.75%. We could, we could find the same result uh, same result resulting in the index numbers as 117.7 in 2008 and 116.8 in 2009 and computing 100 times 116.8 minus 117.7 and slash 117.7 equals zero uh, minus 0 0.76. The small difference here is accounted uh, accounted for the rounding of the index numbers so to no, no one oh wait uh, numbers to no one uh, one figure after the decimal points. It is also useful to graph index numbers if we are interested in uh, a visual comparison of the behavioral of different variables. For example, figure 7.3 allows one to see easily that in 2008, when the financial crisis emerged, full-time employment in Australia contracted while part-time employment accelerated. This observation will motivate a researcher to investigate the labor market processes that underpinned this outcome. As mentioned above, index numbers also allow us to compare the evolution of two or more variables over time when the underlying units of measurement of which uh, of each variable are number are different. For example, for decades, rural wages in most uh, national nations grew in line with labor productivity, which created the space for wages to grow without invoking inflationary pressures. This observation means that economists are often interested in examining the relationship between the two variables over time. Figure 7.4 shows the relationship between real wages and productivity growth in Australia from 1978 to 2015. In index number to form, the base period of March 2018 and 2000, excuse me, 1982, and the underlying data are, are quarterly. Productivity is measured in terms of units of real GDP per hour worked while wor real wages are comp computed as the nominal wage series are, are dollars per hour, deflated by the consumer price index. By converting the difference series to common index numbers, we are readily able to see the compar comparative behavioral of those uh, these re related uh, time series variables. In a 7.7 annual percentage growth rate. In chapter four, we computed the percentage of changes in CPI from one period to the next. We are essentially solving the equation. 
CPI uh, T equals CPI T minus investment uh, times investment plus one uh, plus I guess year uh, slash one hundred. Uh, this is a year. I'm not sure. Anyway, uh, oh R, it's an R. Never mind. Uh, where R is the rate of change. There we go. Of CPI expressed at a percentage, economists are often required to compute how fast the economy or some other aggregate is growing on the average over a number of years. We are then uh, calculating a constant compound compound growth rate. Seven point eight textbook policy regarding form. Uh, formalism, uh, we recognize that students have different ways in which they learn and develop their understanding of concepts. Some prefer the mathematical approach, while others prefer the, the, the graphical approach. Others still learn better through reading the, the written word, even though that form of communication is, pro, is prone to interpretive issues. All the essential material in the text will therefore be presented in an all, all three ways. Sometimes the mathematical treatment will appear to be an appendix of the relevant chapter, usually the more difficult advanced material, and sometimes within the main body of the text. We also aim to promote understanding and believe that a student is entitled to learn in the way that best suits their own pro, uh, pro proclivities. However, it is also the case that pro professional economists use a variety of methods, including numerical, graphical, uh, algebraic, and narrative in their work, and we believe it is important to expose students to a broad range of pre uh, presentation methods de uh, deployed in the real world. Okay, so let's see. This is a part that says try it yourself. In 1960, real GDP in Australia was 749.083 million and it had grown to um, 1.508,267 million in 2012. To calculate the average annual comp compound growth rate over this 50 year, 52 year period, we need to utilize some simple algebra and deploy the notion of compound growth rate. We can write y, yt equals y is it r no uh, zero uh, to one uh, plus r. Whereas Y is real GDP uh, in 2012, Y uh, is real GDP in, 19, in 1960. R is the average compound growth rate uh, expressed as a decimal, a decimal, excuse me, that is a R equals R slash 100, and T is the number of periods over which we are compounding in the case 52 years. Uh, here we need to use the natural uh, logarithm, uh, um, logarithmic, okay, uh, rhythm, uh, some, some of that, um, to simplify our, our task. The task is to solve for the unknown uh, r, y, uh, y slash y equals uh, either 1 or i uh, plus r. Uh, N Y Y equals T times N uh, I plus R. And Y, is it Y2? No, uh, Y T slash uh, Y0 uh, equals N uh, slash 1 plus R. And expression is uh, N Y. Uh, T Y zero um yeah okay anyway sorry <laughs> uh both lighting and my glasses are not very good as far as this particular small print anyway so table seven point three shows these steps in the calculation and you can paste the data into a spreadsheet to derive from the same results the calculations show that the annual average compound growth real uh real GDP which which would be the Y 
uh, R, which is the rate uh, for Australia between 1916 and, tw and 2012 was 3.5, 3 3.3, You can use the form in the formula for any period or data frequency, for example, month, quarter, year, uh, by substituting the appropriate information into the calculation. So uh, 7.3 compound growth rate calculation was uh, real GDP or Y, uh, 1960 dollar amount, uh, Y, zero, two, four, nine, zero, eight, three, real GDP, uh, 2012, um, my sign M, a Y, uh, 150267. The time period uh, or year would be T and then 52. Uh, GDP 2012 or comparative uh, uh, GDP or Y uh, slash Y. So year to date, GDP 2012 and GDP uh, for 1960. Um, equals one uh, I plus R, which was six, six zero five five three, uh, take log uh, uh, equals T in uh, one uh, or I plus R, 18,009, divide by 52, which would be in uh, I plus R, 0 0.0346, uh, take Antilog, is antilog? I guess antilog uh, equals I plus R 1.0352, R 0.352 again, and R percent be 3.5240. Anyway, so conclusion. This chapter provided a review of the basic mathematics that is often used in macroeconomics, including algebra, power series, index numbers, and growth rates. A simple macroeconomic model was presented to provide an example of the math math methodology often used. Our policies regar our policy regarding formulation, our form formalism is the, in this textbook was clarified uh, we are we use we use uh, three methods to present all the essential material: words, graph, mathematics. Each student can choose to put method best choose the method best suited to their learning style. Uh, let's see. You can go to wwwmacmillanihecom uh, Mitchell uh, Myasai Macro. And so, as I said earlier, the next chapter will be, and that'll be tomorrow, uh, the use on chapter eight, the use of framing and language in macroeconomics. Thanks for listening. Again, please subscribe. Please uh, comment, like, hit the bell, um, and share. Uh, but I emphasize subscribe. I emphasize square, uh, share. I emphasize comment. And the like button pretty much all the above. Either way, uh, thanks for listening. Uh, once again, go to realprogressors.org for more NMT-related articles, uh, audio interviews, uh, or go to um, go to YouTube and look up um, uh, Pro, Pro, uh, Progress or Progressives in Action, I mean, uh, which will have the Parker Show, uh, which will also have the Rook Scholar, um, and look up uh, Status Quo with the uh, Steve, uh, Steve uh, Grumbine, which they, they co host the show, I think on Wednesdays. So I'll let you know tomorrow. I can't remember the day. But anyway, uh, point being is look this stuff up, learn MMT. MMT, if you want to learn macroeconomics, is has been shown to be the one uh, macroeconomic uh, uh, theory that actually works. Um, yeah, now look up L. Randall Ray, Wayne Mitchell, Martin Watts. Steve Keen, Michael Hudson, uh, uh, Warren Mosler, Steve Grumbine again, Stephanie Kelton, you name it. And, th and uh, those I have named are the experts on modern monetary theory. I am still very much learning, but I know a lot so far, and I'm learning through uh, reading this to you guys. So once again, um, subscribe, comment, like, hit the bell, and share. 
Thank you, and peace out for now. I'll talk to you tomorrow.